Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel. And today I have another beautiful box from Bird Moss that has been sent to me for review. This is such a special box. It is so different from anything else that I have ever seen. And I just like to bring you along on the journey that the box takes us on every single month. The box is now $45 per month, which I still think is a great deal for this really immersive and special experience. I feel like this is something that can really inspire those of you who are creative, whether you're writers or artists of some other sort. And um, I just feel like it's really perfect for the fall months, but I'm sure that it's magical in the summer and spring months as well. So if you use the code Noel, that will save you $7, but she's always doing all kinds of great deals where you get extra gifts or boxes. So definitely check it out, but do let her know that this is where you found the box if this is the first time that you are seeing it. So let me go ahead and read the description of the box just in case it is the first time I didn't do last month's box. This is actually the October box. So it says Bird Moss box subscribers say it's like getting a daydream in the mail. With each box you'll receive works of art and self-care rituals that engage all the senses to create an immersive magical experience. Think of it as a package from a friend who cherishes your delightful heart and spirit. Your boxes are accompanied by poetry and prose which tell of a gifted dreamer. You are that dreamer and this is your story. Some letters and documents arrive, arrive inside your monthly box and others are emailed to you. So it's really fun. It's an email that you actually enjoy getting, I feel like. And I am going to be doing their advent box as well, which is going to be part of my 12 Days of Noel series, not to be confused with my adventure series, which you'll be seeing here on the channel in December. All right, you guys, so this is what the beautiful little box looks like. It's always filled with all kinds of special treasures. So let's go ahead and dive on in. And then inside, she does always have this really pretty little poem that says, Gather pen, paper, matches. This is the start of it all. When finally dusk begins to fall and muffle the day's noises and needs, it starts with a tug, a beckoning scent, a rustle, the faint rattle of seeds. You didn't know that you were missing from a story pouring forward in another place. You break the seal and feel the skating brush of a wing. And then look at this beautiful leaf. I always love when people create these uh, lace-like leaves, which of course does happen naturally in nature, but I know that there's a process where they can do this. These make really beautiful um, cast jewelry pieces, but I just always think they're really lovely. It's like nature's ribbon or nature's bows. And then of course we have this nice dark, dark blue tissue paper, like midnight, and we have to uh, break the seal and feel the skating brush of a wing. I just love how um, we wind up not having super hard rhyme there at the end, but I think I'm also like reading the line breaks not quite right, because maybe it's supposed to rhyme with the missing there. You'd think I would be more sensitive to that as someone who once upon a time was a poet. So we have our card that tells us the theme for the month, which is the silent village. It already looks a little bit spooky, interrupted, Ooh, even more spooky, like M. Night Shyamalan vibes, right? And then on the back, it kind of gives us the introduction. So let me read this to you. It says, the darkness is growing. Once it clouded only the uninhabited, northernmost parts of the map. Now it seeps into a remote farming village. This is not the darkness of thunderstorms or nightfall. It is opaque and muffling, a slurry of shadows. The scared crow has seen something like it before in another world, but no one knows why it is here. As it approaches, many creatures move south. The trees remain, witnessing the pooling fog. The darkness overtakes the village. Its people are interrupted in their tasks. They are engulfed and then disappear. They do not know how to stave off the creeping murk, and it does not occur to them to ask the trees for help. I think it's actually the scarred crow. Sorry about that, you guys. My apologies, but here we go. Again, nice misty, misty scene going on there. And then what else do we have? We have our letter that tells us everything. And I love how it's always annotated with handwritten notes. It looks very much like someone did this individually on each one, but it does tell us about the individual items that are in here. And then, then of course, at the top, it says braving the darkness. Sometimes dreaming is lonely. For the first time, you are afraid. So maybe that's why I thought it was a scared crow instead of a scarred crow. All right, so we have a little envelope. So I'm wondering if this is the emissary's signal because there is a little drawing of an envelope there. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up with my little handy dandy letter opener here. Let's see. 
Sometimes I'm not sure what the actual item is because they all have special names, but let's see what it is. It says, you stand on the outskirts of the silent village, gathering your courage to approach. You hear a rustle in the undergrowth. Then an animal emerges and takes her place beside you. The forest has sent this emissary to accompany you into the village. She suggests that you search the nearby farmhouse for tools and supplies. I feel like we're going on a, a immersive game, right? So I believe everyone got different animals as their emissaries because Bird Moss actually has a really active Facebook group as well and people were sharing their cards. So I didn't look too much because I wasn't sure what it would be. But mine is the hare and the oak. So it's kind of like a tarot card and it says it's a symbol of new opportunities, which seems very auspicious and perfect for this journey that we are about to take. So really pretty uh, back of the card. And then I love this rabbit, which seems very appropriate. So I love that kind of nimble and quick and uh, soothe and soothing, smooth and soothing. All right, let's see what else we have. So then now that we've gotten past all of our sort of paperwork, you can see there's lots of things nestled inside of this blue shred. So let me see if I can find the next thing. Hmm, everything's like bundled up in special little packages. So I don't know that I'll be able to go exactly in the right order. I would like to, but I'm not sure that I can. So here we go. We have a walnut wood device, and I believe that it is going to be this little like palette, which is kind of cool. Um, uh, it looks like a palette to me, but it's got the little circles there. It says, in the farmhouse, the emissary helps you locate a leaf-shaped tool made of walnut wood. It will be useful for preparing evergreen sprigs or other plants and herbs. To bring out the rich tone of the wood and make it your own, quicken your herb stripper by rubbing it with food-grade oil or beeswax. Oh, so you can like push this through and it's going to strip all of the little leaves off of, of your herbs. That's really cool. I wouldn't have thought that. It looks like an artist palette to me, but that's a really interesting idea because you know when you're doing like, you know, oregano and all those little ones that have little leaves, this is such an easier way to do it. I think that's what that's for. There's even like a star shaped one for certain things. So I'll have to look into exactly what you use it for. Then it looks like we have, um, I'm guessing this is it. So it says forest fairy and it says that it is a solid perfume. We've got this little guy here. It says it's a forest or a salve. It says you prepare a salve of gifts from the trees. Evergreen, cottonwood, frankincense, and lemon. Its light, spicy scent purifies the air around you so you can travel through the darkness safely. Dab it on your pulse points to create a forest aura. It says this salve will keep you safe, but how will you dispel the darkness? Love that. It says, uh, for the walnut wood device, the little note says, the people who live there received a formulation from the foxes, but did not understand its uses. Uh, that's me with this uh, little the herb stripper. Oh, that smells good, you guys. So if you, ha you can't hear it or you're new to my channel, I do, I'm still getting over a little bit of a cold, but that does kind of open up the senses a little bit. So that was kind of nice. We've got a couple more items, so let me see. Oh yes, this is the Forest Aura Sav. We actually got a nice little uh, note about it, so that's kind of cool. And then it says, I have to open up, there's a little bag like this, and then there's a, this little pouch too. So I have to see which the next one is. So I might have to take a quick peek. All right, oh, so I think this is what we're looking for. It's a pie bird, and I love that it came in this little like Futashiki like wrapping cloth. It's a pie bird. It kind of looks like a salt and pepper shaker to me, but see, it's hollow this way, and then it does have a little hole there. I don't know what you use this for. It says, exploring the kitchen in the farmhouse, you discover an old fashioned pie vent. Oh, so you put it at the center of your pie so the steam can escape in the shape of a blackbird. Vents like these prevent boil over and soggy crust by creating a chimney for steam and juice. Uses. It gives you an idea. What if the dark fog could be vented away? It says it's possible to cut a small gateway between worlds, but it requires a silver blade. Um, so that is so smart and how cute to have this little this little bird peeking out of your pie. Um, it might kind of get some steam coming out of it as well. So that is super smart. So it's just it's like that on top of your pie. Now let me know in the comments below how many of you actually make homemade pies because if you do I'm very very impressed. So of course it's going to be more like your apple pies and your cherry pies that have that top crust because you wouldn't necessarily need it on your pumpkin pies that I know a lot of us are making. That's like one of those easier, those pour, the pies where you pour them, those I feel like are more more doable. 
All right, speaking of our pies, so this kind of has like a baking hosting theme with this farmhouse village. We have a little serving uh, knife, a little like pie knife, it's a little tiny one, but that's kind of perfect for your small tarts and stuff. So this looks like it's antique. It actually says K on it. So that's kind of cool. I always love when we get like antique vintage pieces in different boxes. So it says, along with the emissary, you search the farmhouse for silver. So we're thieves now. <laughs> it says, there's one sharp blade, but it's forged from steel. Most of the utensils are made from tin. Finally, you find a silver plated knife. It's worn and blunt, but perhaps the accrued energy of many family dinners will strengthen it. At the far northern side of the village, you cut an X in the air and visualize its edges, peeling them back just a little. Immediately, the dark, dark fog begins to dissipate, pouring through the vent with a barely audible hiss. As the darkness lifts, the light in the houses flicker to life, and you hear the sound of voices. At some point, your companion disappeared into the forest. My little rabbit ran away? My emissary? Oh no, that's not good. It says, search the farmhouse for the recipe they received from the foxes. Oh, so we do have a recipe, it says, for Susan's cherry pie. She adds a little bit of cinnamon when she cans the cherries. So that's like a note that was on the back of the little um, ingredients for the salve. So we got this little antique pie knife, which was cute, a silver plated knife. And then let's see, I think we have one more item here, which is a pumpkin favor. Oh, so we got some of these little pumpkins, these little like potpourri. So they're just loose in there. It's a whole little bag full. I won't pour them all out, but these are really darn cute. I've gotten these in a couple of different boxes. I'm not sure if these ones actually have scent, but they are really adorable, aren't they? I'm not sure what plant they come from that creates these little light, hollow pumpkins, but they're adorable. It says, in the village center, people have returned to the routine, seemingly unaware of their previous absence. A villager in high spirits approaches and says, happy harvest. Will you join us at the clove house? But doesn't wait for you to answer. He presses a muslin bundle into your hand and continues on his way. The bag is filled with seed pods, which resemble tiny pumpkins. Use them in festive decorating or as an altar offering. What is the clove house, you ask? That, I also asked that. Um, that was one of the little notes. So again, these are super adorable. So this is our little muslin bag that's pressed into our hands. Um, so again, not like super high, high value items, but very unique. And again, it's taking us on this magical journey. So let's see, what is the clove house? I'm not sure. There's a couple little paper items down here that I'm trying to grab the corners of. And then she does always give us Ah, so the clove house, it says in October, encounter the clove house. I feel like she means November because I'm pretty sure this was the October box, the silent village that I opened for you. And then I think this, it's kind of hearkening to the next one, which should be the November clove house. That's what I'm guessing. Oh, so here is, oh, it's from North to South Designs, which I have seen before. So we got kind of the backer card for the herb stripper and it does tell us how to use it. So you can see, so you pick the hole with the most snug fit, and then of course you pull the herb through, keeping fingers close to the wood on the bottom side as you pull, or use a notch to remove larger leafy greens, such as kale and collard greens. Oh, that's smart. So you can use this notch right here to kind of strip those longer stems. So I think that is actually a really cool tool. So definitely some really neat um, items to receive, and then like just beautiful um, details, like this beautiful leaf, the little wrapping cloth I thought was good. I know a lot of you are crafty and you might be able to use that little scrap of fabric, but overall, I thought this was a lovely box. I always think that it is a lovely box. Let's actually have, since this is such a mystical, magical box, let's have a secret password for this one. So it is going to be hair like a rabbit so h-a-r-e is going to be our secret password for today if you are new to my channel what we do is i have secret password giveaways every month so when you come across the secret password you want to put it into the google form linked for you in the description box below and at the end of the month they go through and i use a random number picker to select a few winners to receive a mystery box from me as my way of saying thank you for watching my videos especially when i have two videos a day like i do right now and you do have to be uh, 18 years or older you have to have a u.s or canadian Canadian mailing address. Canadians, you kind of have to help me out with the shipping because it's pretty pricey, but this is in no way affiliated with YouTube or any of the boxes that I open here. Again, just a way of keeping you guys kind of engaged, make it a little bit fun, and allow me to share some really beautiful goodies with you. So I do love that we all got like our mystery emissary, our little spirit animal to guide us through this time around. And beautiful artwork on that deck of cards. 
And then the walnut wood device, aka herb stripper, as well as the pie vent. I thought these were really cool items. These are things that I don't already have in my kitchen. I'm not a big pie baker, but this is just a really cute thing to have on your kitchen shelves as well. And then it's always nice to have a nice little vintage uh, pie server, or you could of course just put this on your charcuterie board. And then in terms of self-care, we got this cute little um, hard perfume, which is very nice. I love to have these like tucked into purses so that I always have something to make me feel a little brighter and fresher and then of course we got a tiny little home decor thing just a little bag of these little seed pods that look like pumpkins again this was the October box I know I'm opening it in November I'm a little bit behind but trying to get all caught up so thank you again so much for allowing me to spend a little time with you today I hope you enjoyed this I know that this particular box isn't for everyone but it's also perfect for some people who really love this kind of experience but again I don't think there's any other box that is doing anything quite like it so I enjoy it so so much i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please help me out with a thumbs up and i'll see you soon in my next unboxing